This is One on One. Steve Adubato on location at AT&T's Global Network Operations Center. We are talking here with uh, Simia Franklin, who is network planning and engineering at AT&T, and also with AT&T's Aspire program and Mentoring Academy. Good to see you. Thank you. Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, let's talk about this Aspire program. It's a mentoring program, right? Yes, that's right. Describe how you got into it and why mentoring is uh, so important to you and AT&T. Well, I think mentoring is the aspect for everyone to get involved with mentoring because without mentoring, you can't move up or grow beyond from where you currently are and where you want to be. Okay. We talked a little bit before we got on camera. You grew up in Patterson, New Jersey. Went to Patterson Eastside High School. That's correct. Yes, I graduated. And many of the young people we were talking, um, we were talking to some of the executives here at AT&T. It's a commitment to uh, helping those who um, are in high school and struggling. Uh, the dropout rate is huge, right? For those who are in high school, some of the young people that you've mentored, what are some of the challenges they face? I believe they have challenges that only you can understand if you live in that type of environment, uh, from poverty to homelessness. The recent uh, mentoring that we do is for homeless uh, adolescents, uh, teenagers, and young adults who have nowhere to go all over New Jersey, and they come to Somerset Home because they, they've been displaced. They come to Somerset Home? Yes. Describe what goes on for them. At Somerset Home, they have this uh, section which is called Passages, which me and other colleagues within at and in all aspects of diversity, uh, male, female, different ethnic groups, different areas um, of the organizations and our employee resource groups, we all have been uh, trained um, to be professional mentors for them to help them with life skills. So, for example, for example, we we've had our very own here from Network Operations. His name is Steve uh, Stir Carey, Terrence Abiyama. They created these different techniques of uh, doing group mentoring. So they create these PowerPoint presentations and we do it for about 15 to 20 minutes and we talk about ourselves and we combine that with like managing techniques, um, how to do day-to-day -day operations, uh, STEM fields, um, we, we tie in STEM. So STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes, we make it fun though. We don't want them to go there and go to sleep like they're in school again. For a, for a 16 or 17 year old? <laughs> exactly. We have to, <laughs> because if we make it, you know, boring, they'll feel like they're in school again, and we don't want that type of atmosphere. We want to seem like an extended friend or like a guardian angel that we just came in and we took them away. Why do you do it? I do it because um, I have people that done it for me. I wouldn't be here with you now if I didn't have anybody to help me out. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. Seriously, why do you say that? Because it's, it's, you have to break away from what you're, the norm. Uh, when you grow up in certain areas, if you're from an uh, urban area or if you're from a suburban area and that's all you know, then you can't get along with everyone. But when you have different mentors that's different than you, you learn so much from them and you become a bigger person and a better person and you're able to share different things. Like, you know, when people have children, you click right away. Oh, my kid could do this and my kid could do that and my kid could do this and that. And so when you have that click, that's great. But when you don't have that click, like I'm a, I'm a female and you're a male, what do we talk about? But we talk about our differences and then we overcome those and then we become better people. You told me right before we got on camera that even though you've been an AT&T mentor, that even though you're teaching young people and you're proud to be in the program, you've learned a great deal. Describe that for our audience. Yes. When you're a mentor, you have to keep an open mind, just like I was trying to explain of the differences. When you're a mentor, you, you're guiding people to do what they want to do. You have to make sure that you, you're understanding what they want. If I want to become a manager, make sure that I become a manager and you give the, them the different ways of becoming a manager and the different hurdles that you cross and things of that nature. But also, they'll teach you a couple of things too. For instance, I had a mentee tell me, you know, you guys complain about your jobs and you were, you went to school all this long time and all these things, but imagine not being able to eat every day. And then you come back to a reality and say, wow, that's deep. So I learned something to be more appreciative of what I have 
What do you think it says about this company that it has invested in not just the people, but a lot of money in this initiative? What do you think it says about the company and its commitment to these young people? I don't think we should necessarily look at the money factor. We should look at the involvement factor of people because we so focus on money so much that we forget the facts of true life. Like, if you, if you don't think about what I can do for you right now, the kids, that's what they look for. Oh, I need this, I need that. And, and those aren't the things they need, they just need to be loved, and that's what we should focus on. It's funny, you're saying that while money is relevant, yes. people are even more important. Investment of people in other people, particularly those younger people. Yes, I think we, yes, we need money, of course. We all do, that's why I come to work. But the volunteerism aspect, that's from love. All the mentors and people working night shifts, uh, Terrence Francis, uh, different network managers here. Teaching young people what? Life skills. Life skills, things that they learn previously in their lives that sometimes we wish we could have done differently. Just didn't get a chance to... One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Sun National Bank, Qualcare Inc., New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, PSENG, Fedway Associates Inc., the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Cone Resnick. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.